take one or Cameron? For me, I always, grow, growing up, I wanted to be a footballer. So for me, it wasn't really about being a rugby player. Luckily, I played rugby for school, but I did a lot of football. It was only when I came back to rugby at about 16 that then I went, oh, okay, I could maybe I could maybe give this a crack and do it as a job. Um, so for me, the love for, for being a sportsman was 100% there. And I think I learned an awful lot from football, which kind of helped me in, in rugby. Um, I think one thing I'm interested to hear from you as well is the amount of kids that you've played with growing up incredibly talented kids that didn't quite make it and for me the biggest thing was was that work rate and probably the top sort of yeah. couple of inches of of knowing what your body needed know what you needed to be in the environment um growing up in Leeds and going into the Leeds first team when I was sort of 17 was quite a harsh environment um it wasn't as nice as it is it is now um I reckon I remember 16 17 years ago going in and as an academy kid you were head down, don't yeah. look a first team player in the eyes. It was a, definitely a bit of massive sort of learning curve for me and the way I kind of earned respect from those players was to pitch up and train hard and, and ultimately show them you can do it on the pitch. Imagine that, was that similar for you? Because yeah, you had some like, big leaders at yeah, Saracens. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, I'd be interesting to hear like from anyone who's gone through that journey is like, was there a moment where like the penny dropped? And I think for me, there was a moment, it was my like, I was like 18, 19, so I'd just into my like second year of playing and we had like a massive back row injury um, crisis and they just threw me in and I think it was my first start and I'm looking around and I've got like Scott Berger next to me and I've got Owen in the change room, uh, Richard Wigglesworth who was, as you know, like, an, like in terms of demanding standards, there's no one higher. And I just remember training on, on the Tuesday and like, I think I got a couple of moves wrong or like run the wrong lines and honestly, I came off that pitch feeling as low as like one can feel in terms of your like characters just being assassinated. But like you, you come off that feeling that's like, you know, uh, it's unfair and all these boys don't want the best for you. But actually it's completely opposite. Everyone wants the best for you in the way that a lot of these guys that we aspire to, I certainly aspire to be like, um, you know, by wanting the best for you, they demand more from you. Um, and that's kind of how, so for for myself coming into that environment to gain respect was by pushing that and seeing how far I can take that and having more demanded of me meant that I would gain respect more. Yeah. But like, what about yourself? So like the penny, you talk about penny dropping for yourself. Is yeah. that like a moment that you thought like, this is now I'm like learning loads here. This is like... Yeah, I think with Leeds, so I had Justin Marshall was the scrum yeah, half yeah. ahead of me, who for me was like, the best the god the best scrum half ever so to learn from him and i was just sat on the bench and i'll be honest i was so happy to just sit on the bench watch him learn from him in training watch him every day he didn't he didn't offer an awful lot of advice to me as you know one-on-one -on -one yeah, skills yeah. type thing but i learned so much just watching how he attacked defenders and um i loved the way he was as a as a professional he was very chilled, very laid back. I remember he walked into a team meeting 10 minutes late. And normally if you're at a team meeting late at, at Leeds, it was locked door, you're done, go and do fitness, whatever. Marshall, I remember, rocked up 10 minutes late, shades on, coffee and a sandwich. <laughs> and Phil Davies, their coach, went, oh, it's all right, Marsh, you come in, mate. Come, come, come in, in you go. And now the lads were like, what's going on there? But in a way, I know it's bad that you shouldn't want to be like that, but I was a bit like, he, he's earned that. Yeah, he, He's earned that respect. He's earned that ability that he can maybe turn up a few minutes late because his coffee and his sandwich weren't ready but because it's Justin Marshall and what he's done and what he he would then come into training he'd be the best trainer or he, and he'd come to the pitch and he'd be the best player on the pitch so I learned an awful lot from him and other sort of individuals there and then at Harlequins coming down here getting a proper opportunity to to play um, I think you've got to ride a few punches when you when you're younger you've got to learn the hard way I think I think that's definitely helped me as a as a player but the lads that all were always welcoming and the lads who shake my hand, you know, the experienced internationals, Ian Bolshaw, those type of players that welcome me in, I always now try and do that with yeah. any young kid that comes in because I know how hard that and it sort of daunting that environment can be. So I think I kind of try and do a little yeah. bit of that. Myself. I was just interested you say there, like, I don't know if a few, but I've not seen anyone, certainly at, at Saracens, who hasn't been the best player that isn't the best trainer. I think someone we probably both know very well is Owen. Yeah. And I'd say he's in that category. He doesn't let you have a bad 
training session, does he? Because yeah. the standards. If you're like a couple of percent off, you, you well, you, you're firstly hearing about it, even if you're not aware about it. Then yeah. like, it definitely raises the standard. Um, I mean, yeah, like everyone talks about. Obviously, he's been out injured for a couple of weeks with us. The standard of training when he comes back is like is mental it's night and day um and that's just not like that anyone else is is like not good enough it's just that he's wired differently in that regard is that he wants the best um and he'll only accept the best and that is so motivating for you as a as a teammate but also for someone for me to learn off um and you've got like loads of different types of leaders uh, i'm sure the same if, in at Quinns, it's just like the amount of leaders you have, and you can just pick little bits that you like, um, which I think is really interesting. I think to have a have a successful career in sport or in any, in any walk of life, I think resilience is right up there with the biggest char characteristic you have to have. Because you have so many bad times. We always say rugby's an emotional roller coaster. One minute you're up, the next week you're literally down rock bottom. Um, and for me, I'm definitely a better player and person from having some really, really bad times. Yeah. Um, 2013, we went to Wales to win a Grand Slam and we got beaten 30 points to three away and it was the worst experience of my life in front of 80,000 Welsh people who hated us and rubbed it in our face so bad. So that, and there was a load of us that just missed out and you were so close to winning the Grand Slam. It, but it was the best thing that happened to me because then three years later, a lot of us, very similar team, went to Paris and won the Grand Slam, made it feel 10 times more special. And because of that feeling we'd had, I think, three years before, made that yeah. that journey, that end goal so much more better. So the resilience we kind of showed, we learned an awful lot about ourselves. We went back and faced the, the fears almost and did it. Um, and it made it even more special. Did it make you then like a bit hungrier in terms of when that opportunity arose as such, you were just like so, not desperate, but you just, you were just yeah. ready for that moment to yeah. come then I again. I think as, as soon as you get that taste of success, like you want it again and again. You, you want to play against the best teams. You guys have been the best team for the last 10 years. So every time we play against you, it's it's massive. And for us as your rivals, to watch your nearest and dearest lift and the amount of trophies you lifted, obviously it hurt. And then, so last year was so nice to get one. I know you guys weren't there, but we, we got yeah, one. Yeah. Um, so then this year, we're obviously both back in the Gallagher Premiership. Those are the games for me. That's why, I'm, that's why I still do it. That's why I still yeah, want to play rugby. Do you know what I love the best about our game is that like, it's obviously such a, a like a big rivalry, and both teams find something different yeah. in those in those weeks. But what I love best is that you get, the game ends, and there's like you could put like a whole thirty of us in the room, and we'd have the best time. <laughs> like they're all like everyone's yeah. dead close, and like always bump into each other in town or whatever. But like I do find that those rivalries, when when you play in them, those teams just find something bigger, something different, and like I think that's more the mental side than the physical side. Like there's just a little bit more bite in like everything that people do. And I think it's great. Like everyone loves watching it. Ben, what I want to know is, were you like you are now when I, when I play against you incredibly competitive? Were you like that as a youngster growing up in the academy, going through school? And was the transition into professional rugby what you thought it would be so I think when I went through that time coming out of school you know like kind of big fish in a small pond to going into that small fish in a massive pond like rubbing shoulders with Billy Mauro you know training with Owen um, you know playing seems like a long way off there um, so like there was a big thing in our young academy group which was just like getting better every day whatever that was you know you, you come in on a Monday and you have leg weights can you do five kilograms heavier than you did the week before? Can you run a, a millisecond quicker than you did before? It's like, it was that belief that if you just kept going those little, that, that like staircase up, the opportunity would come. Now it's not gonna get given to you. Um, and it's also not a given that it will, but you can quite comfortably hold your head high and you will gain the respect of everyone if that is always the case. If you're striving to be better, just that tiny bit better than the day before. 
Um, and that was a big thing that's like lived with me and it brings me joy when I see younger guys that are in my position doing that. And it also on the vice versa, if you see someone drifting a little bit, it's, it's quite tough to watch. Um, and that's where that kind of leadership side comes in and you might want to offer that bit of perspective. It's so hard to see. I think honesty is the key word. Yeah. I think it's always, as players, we want from coaches. And I think sometimes it's all your teammate probably needs is yeah. a bit of honesty. I remember when I first came to Harlequins, I wasn't getting played. They signed Andy Gummersall, so there's two scrum hours ahead of me. And I kept banging on Dean Richards' door every week, being like, mate, you've got to play me, you've got to play me. Like, I need to play. Because I'd come down from Leeds and I had a taste of the Premiership. And he always said, he's like, you're not ready. You're not ready. I was like, Wait. I was like, I am. At the time, 100%, I was like, nah, I'm ready. I'm ready, Dean. Give me a chance, I'm ready. And he said, I promise you, Danny, you're not ready. But when you are, I'll give you that opportunity. And I was, I was that guy, I was like, wow, this is, it was poor me. He was like, why yeah. am I not playing? All my mates are playing. I was desperate to play. Um, lo and behold, I wasn't ready. Mate. <laughs> I wasn't ready. He was right. He was right. And then he did, the opportunity finally came. It was actually away at Saracens. This was God, a long time. You were in nappies probably still, mate. Um, but I got an opportunity to play and start and we played well. And after the game, I think I scored a try and he went, there you go. You're ready now. I was like, funny that, isn't it? I was like, funny, yeah, funny. <laughs> but um, I think at the time, it's so hard as a player. You're so blinkered that you think, well, it's I, I need to play, and it's all everything's so important is the next game. Whereas bigger picture stuff, something yeah. I've definitely learned is is patience is is an absolute virtue in this game. Yeah. We had a game not long ago, and he'll, he'll be the first to admit we played Wasps away, and can Alex Good couldn't catch a cold for the whole day, <laughs> dropped everything, and. Uh, we, we did lose the game, not because of him, but we come come into the change rooms and he was the first to say, look, my bad. And those kind of more experienced guys can sort that out themselves. So like they'll cut, they were coming in Monday, he was in Monday, first one in, literally came into the, the tent and there he is catching high balls. So mate, let's talk about adversity and how you deal with it. I'd imagine you've had a fair bit of it. I would say I'm, I'm similar. I've been dropped more times than I can imagine. But how do you, how do you personally deal with setbacks? I'd actually say that the setbacks and the stuff that I've had to deal with has been an interesting one for me. Um, it's like one of those big like soul searching moments. It's not like actually you don't go into the wilderness and find yourself, but you know, it's one of those moments where you do sit down and talk to people and, you know, kind of work out a way to get through it and almost find that dealing with stuff is so much easier if you've got a plan about actually where you're going to go, what you want to achieve um, short term, long term. In terms of off the pitch, are there little moments that give you massive enjoyment in terms of helping maybe those young guys talk about wanting to do that same journey? Are there moments that you're like, I really enjoy doing that? Yeah, the I think because from going through so many bad times, um, when you get to kind of the end of the rainbow, um, you you I've learned so much about that. I've learned so much about myself. I've learned so much about the sport. I've learned so much about life. For me now, all I'm doing is trying to enjoy the last year or so, however long it lasts, um, and try and enjoy every minute. But at the same time, just trying to help younger lads that I've kind of can see might be going on a similar path. So for me, Marcus Smith is the perfect example of someone that came into the squad really young. I kind of see a little bit of myself in him as a youngster. Um, he's a lot more talented than I am. But to see him now playing for England, to see Alex Donbrandt playing for England, Joe Marchant, these kids that have gone through all the stuff that we've been through, have had some hard times, have had bad games, but are now being rewarded by playing for their country on the biggest stage um, and have you know overcoming setbacks now I get real joy in, in that, that yeah. and watching that and seeing maybe maybe I've helped a tiny bit you know Marcus texts me a lot for advice and stuff whether it's good or bad I don't know yeah. tell him what not to do mostly <laughs> but um, I get such joy from from that and that's what I kind of feel as a leader that's my kind of role in the team is to I wanted to help the lads win a trophy to understand that that's what it takes to win yeah. one now. Hopefully Harlequins can go and yeah. be successful for years. 
I imagine it's similar yeah. similar thing. I mean I was just you. thinking then, just as you said there, like you've helped a little bit. Like everyone everyone comes and like wants to come and be your mate and give you advice when things are going well. I just think that like those people and those people you look up to and those leaders that come to you when you're not necessarily top of the pops, you're not like at the best place, rugby, life, whatever. They'll always stick with you just a little bit, little bit longer, and that they'll always have that lasting effect. So when you say, "Not sure how much of an effect you, you've had," I can guarantee that, like, if you've had those moments with someone, that'll last so much longer, and they'll actually never forget that. Uh, and I know, well, I, we've spoken about some individuals there that, for me, like every time I see them, I'm I'm so thankful that I've not only had them at a time where I needed them, but like I could almost guarantee they'd they'd still be at my my beck and call if if I needed them. So I just think like the la the lasting effect of helping someone when when they need it most in terms of that resilient side, that that leadership uh, is just so important. Did you have anyone growing up? that maybe there was a leader in your life, maybe a teacher or something that you, has inspired you to maybe want to be a bit like them? Um, definitely one jumps to mind. I had a housemaster from when I was about 13 to 18, and obviously quite a tricky age group. You know, you go through a, a number of trials in that, in that time. Um, and he always just said, you know, be a good person. Like, no matter how good or bad news you receive, be a good person with it. Um, because there's always someone at the other end who will be affected by how, how you receive that. You know, if you get great news and you're, you're you know, there's nothing worse than a bad winner. Um, and, you're, and, you know, if you're in the same room as someone who's struggling, that will, that will leave a long lasting effect and vice versa. That's always resonated with me and something that I've, I've, I've gone through. So I think rugby teaches resilience. I, I, I thoroughly believe it. I think the lessons that I probably learned as a five-year-old, the, the rugby values that are instilled in you that early of, of teamwork, discipline, respect, will help me ultimately when I do transition into whatever I, I go into. Um, but I do think resilience is the top of the log for that. The fact that you can put yourself completely out of a comfort zone, go and play England versus Wales in front of 80,000 people. When I speak to some people, they say, how do you do that? And you're like, well, it's, it's just like what we do. But then, you know, going into a board meeting and speaking would be for us probably something incredibly hard. But I think as a rugby player, you'd go, well, I'll give it a go. Because you have to be brave, I think, as a, as a rugby player. So I'd like to think I've kind of demonstrated a few characteristics of that throughout my career. And I'd hope that maybe young kids watching Quinns over the years or watching England would say, yeah, he, he bounces back a lot because he, yeah. he's always getting dropped, but <laughs> he comes back and he goes again. So I, it's something I'd like to instill in my kids is, is being resilient. I think it's so imperative for, for life yeah. in general um, and how you react to setbacks. So in terms of like a legacy you want to leave, when that time comes and you have to hang up your boots, firstly, what, what do you want to be remembered as as a teammate and a mate? And then secondly, what do you think you'll have learnt from your career that you could maybe transfer into something afterwards? Yeah, I know, it's, it's no secret, I'm nearing the end, Ben. Um, at 35 now, I'm still very lucky, touch wood, to, to still be going and body being all right. But legacy-wise, always, I've always said it, whenever I stop, I'd, I'd just like people to think I was a, a good bloke, a good teammate, worked hard, uh, was fun on and off the pitch. Um, if they think I was a good player, that's nice. But for me, more the importance of sort of the respect of, of teammates, of coaches, of the fans. What would you, what would you, what, what now, if people were to say about Ben Earl, what would you like them to, to say? Well, I think when I look at people who have had to hang up their boots from the club, um, the ones that I always remember the best and the ones that I'm most positive about, are the people that you've got like a specific memory or a moment they've actually really helped you. Um, and I'd like to think, I, I'm always now thinking about that when I'm trying to converse with people, is that like, I remember this one time where Ben did this, I remember this game where Ben was brilliant with me, whatever. Um, so I always like to think that, and if you've got that in the back of your mind, I don't think you'll go too far wrong in terms of being approachable with everyone. 
um, as much as driving standards, but also just being a good person with it. Um, we all go through those moments where you'd rather just focus on yourself and just be on, be by yourself. But I think by and large, I'd like to be remembered as someone who always gave his time for others, um, but also, you know, helps people be better. Um, and I think that would be quite a nice way to be remembered, I think.